a dynamometer for testing hand strength. Now, somebody told me about these and I haven't a clue who it was. I went on my email and searched for it. I don't know where they actually let me know about it. So I couldn't find who it was. My apologies for that. But this is a device that I got from eBay. It was available from AliExpress and other places, the usual suspects. And it's described as a 198 pound, 90 kilogram electronic hand grip strength meter dynamometer training measuring UK. And comes in about £20. Uh, I got it from a UK seller. You can get it cheaper from other international suppliers. And these things are used not just in the sort of like the health and fitness type industries. It comes in this sort of rather stylish box with magnetic uh, clips in the box. Everybody seems to do that these days. But it's also used, uh, aside from the health clinics, it's also used in hospitals for actually testing uh, patient strength to see, I suppose, ultimately how they're recovering from things or if in the worst case they've had a stroke or something like that and, uh, you know, they've not got the full grip. And um, certainly Kevin, uh, one of my friends locally, uh, said, I was talking to him about it, telling him about I'd got one of these and he said he had to use one of them um, when he went for a fitness test and they had actually had to hold their arm up, grip it and then swing their arm down to their side to get the maximum peaks of the strength at a given position. So this thing is reassuringly solid. I have to say I was a bit concerned about this because I have quite strong grip. And for MD who's uh, ever slipped while holding pliers and they close suddenly and they catch a chunk of the flesh, it's not nice. So I was a bit apprehensive about gripping something like this and the sound of scrunching plastic and nipping myself in there. But it seems very robust. It has this uh, narrowed thumb wheel that adjusts the relative position of this. You've got a little graduated scale at the side. And when you turn it on, it takes uh, two AAA batteries that, in a quite interesting way. They tuck in, sort of negative end in first, tuck in, and then clip down. And when you turn it on, it you can turn it on two ways. You can just press start, and it'll just pure, do a pure weight measurement. But if you press on and set, it lets you set things like age and gender. So, for instance, if you press set again, it would switch to the gender, and you can toggle between the female and male and the age you can toggle it up or down and I've set it to my age because it seems appropriate to set it to 54 uh, and then it has 19 of these memories I guess it's for some sort of gym facility I'm guessing not sure or, or a large family but once you've done that you can press start and it will give you you can toggle then using the on button you can toggle between kilograms and pounds so let's see what I can clock because it stores the high setting so if I squeeze this now It stores the highest setting, which was 131 pounds, which is apparently strong. That equates to... Uh, right, 131 pounds. I'm not sure I'm supposed to press that button. Uh, 131 pounds uh, times 2 point... Uh, divided by 2.2. 2. 131 pounds divided by 2.2... Uh, is roughly about just short of 60 kilograms. <clears throat> but it, it lets you choose either either metric or imperial. And as I say, you can just press start. Uh, I don't know if I would say... I was going to try that thing that Kevin said about swing the arm, but the, the ceiling is, is very close to me, being tall. Um, but you can just start by... by uh, you don't have to go through the whole startup sequence. You can literally just press the start button and it will wake it up. It will calibrate... And then you can just do, do a sort of raw strength test like that. And it'll just log the maximum setting. Let's see if I, if I get it right this time. Oh, there it goes. 60, 61 kilograms and 134 pounds. Useful. So let's take it to bits. Sometimes you see the results like this and you wonder why I don't break more stuff. But the answer is I do actually break quite a lot of stuff. Hands like vices. So let's get the batteries out. I guess a, a sharp tap will do that. So what are we expecting in here? We're expecting, I wonder how that uh, holds in. Oh, there's a screw up the end. That's interesting. Well, this isn't going to be long enough. It's not long enough. That's annoying. This is. But it's insulated, so it's not going to go up either. Oh, no. Let's try this one. Is this going to go up? Yes. So, I don't know if this bit is supposed to come out here, but let's take it out anyway. So, 
so yeah, it's a surprising the variation in strength. You know, I can go from crushing stuff to picking tiny things up with for surface mount uh, assembly. I'm currently getting grips to grips with my first ever surface mount uh, from scratch build, I think. Have I done surface mount before? I'm not really sure. Let's uh, make a note that these little tiny short screws were up at the top there. These ones are probably going to be longer. And inside I'm expecting this to look a bit like a set of baggage scales. Are these roughly the same size these screws think they are? Which will be an aluminium bar with the strain gauge on it. Will it even be aluminium? Will it be another metal? Because it is quite, it is being subject to quite a high torque. Oh, there it is. So the electronics are fairly predictable. Here is the device. Now is this screw? Yeah. When you turn this here, it winds this up relative to this. So they've actually got a, an actual complete bridge here with a strange gauge mounted over there, but they've also got a strain gauge going over there with copper wires. Copper wires that run right past that uh, metal thread. So I'm not sure if you ever have problems with this and uh, try jiggling that. That that seems a bit a bit shady. So there is the strain gauge that uh, you can also access it. If you take this handle off completely by unscrewing it, you can then unscrew these screws and that would slide out, but there's not going to be a lot to see in that. It is just basically a, a piece of aluminum. I'm guessing that's aluminum. Let's say I get a magnet onto it and see. Yeah, it's a, it's a aluminum. With a steel core going up in the middle, which does make sense, but an aluminum knurled knob at the bottom. The unit itself has the power going from the batteries. Noting the battery contacts here, they've got the two connections coming up here and the battery contacts going straight onto the circuit board, which is quite interesting. And this is where I completely mess it up by misplacing or getting a fingerprint on the zebra strip. At least the screws are all pretty much the same size here, which is quite nice. What are we expecting? I, I would say blobs. Maybe a surface mount uh, amplifier for the strain gauge. But after that, it's going to be uh, just a blob probably under the LCD display. So I shall leave the LCD display in. There's the zebra strip. There is the strain gauge sensor. Does it have a number on it? Where are the strain, strain, strain gauge? The strain gauge wires are going right on up there. And they're kind of coming around to the outside. So maybe that's not. Could That, oh, that might be a memory chip for storing those settings. Uh, let me take a look at that through a magnifying device. T4C02, it's a memory chip. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just, uh, I'll bring in a different magnifying glass here for the optical gratification. But the rest of it is ultimately down to this blob, which will be a standard well, I say standard, but standard-ish microcontroller, probably with state strain gauge facilities. I'd guess it is probably going to be a fairly standard chip. Not a lot to see, is there? The four buttons, some test points. There will be a calibration mode. I wonder how they'd use the calibration. I don't particularly wish to put it into calibration in case it calibrates in some weird, random manner. So that's fundamentally it. It's almost like a baggage scale or a set of uh, kitchen scales. It is just measuring the distortion of this aluminium bar that has four wires going into it. And if you if you look up strain gauge, you'll see that there are um, various techniques for this. It, generally, it usually forms a resistive bridge and it can detect even the tiniest movement by the distortion of those resistance values because they change slightly relative to each other. But it's, uh, in a way, I suppose it's simpler than I was expecting. The calibration, the mechanical calibration must be done by these drilled sections here, these little arches, so that, you know, for that given range of scale, this will deflect down a given mount. And when you turn it on, it will initially just, it will calibrate out at zero each time and base its measurement from uh, that, from the deflection from the original position.
It's interesting. It's a lot simpler than I was expecting. I was kind of almost disappointed. I thought there was going to be a lot more in it, but fundamentally that is modern electronics, isn't it? You you have the blob that doing all the work, then driving the LCD display, and, and you have a little memory chip added on. Almost a surprise they didn't have the memory chip in the blob, but I guess that just uh, for many applications it wouldn't need the memory if it was just a standard weighing scale. But there you go. There's the dynamometer. That, that could be quite fun at parties for a strength test to see who's strongest.